We're going to look at this video at the graphs of hyperbolic functions, and then we're leading on to then what's called logarithmic for, logarithmic form of inverse hyperbolic functions. So the graphs of hyperbolic functions, and first of all, you can see you've got your top one here is your graph of hyperbolic costs. The bottom one is your graph of hyperbolic sine. These were we showed these in the last video where we got these from. We also uh, showed where we got the graph of hyperbolic tan. And it's got the two horizontal asymptotes at y equals 1 and y equals <coughs> minus 1 as well. And then a couple of trickier ones, the hyperbolic uh, sec. And sec, remember, hyperbolic sec is 1 over hyperbolic sine. And also, uh, oops, sorry, hyperbolic, uh, hyperbolic, 1 over hyperbolic cos, I should say, and hyperbolic uh, cosec is the same as 1 over hyperbolic of sine. So you can see those graphs. So we're not going to go through where we get where we get them from, but you do need to know those. So you learn those, please. And hyperbolic cot then, which is, remember, 1 over hyperbolic tan. Uh, so notice uh, it has it is a wee bit different. It's got asymptotes in at y is equal to plus or minus uh, 1, and x is equal to 0. Uh, you need to learn. I would just learn off that one. It's a quite a tricky one uh, to do. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to look at the inverse functions here. Inverse, and instead of writing these as inverse, we've said uh, arc hyperbolic sine and arc hyperbolic tan and so on. But that just means the same as means hyperbolic tan to the minus one, hyperbolic sine to the minus one, and so on. Okay, how you get these effectively is by reflecting on your line y equals uh, y equals x. So this that I'm shading in in yellow, highlighting yellow, that's your uh, hyperbolic sine. So if you reflect that, that is what arc hyperbolic sine is, or inverse hyperbolic sine. Okay, so a very easy enough, easy enough one to do. The next one, again, there was your hyperbolic tan. So if you inverse it, so flip it on your y equals x, that's what it looks like. So notice my, for the original one, the, the uh, asymptotes were uh, y is equal to 1 and y is equal to minus 1 there. Now x is equal to 1 and x is equal to minus 1. And <coughs> for our cos, uh, there was cos. It was 1 to 1 uh, for in this range. And you reflect it, and that's what you get for the inverse hyperbolic uh, cos. And then you can see we've just done one of these ones. We've done the hyperbolic sec. You can see hyperbolic sec would have been here, like this, and then the inverse would be like this. So again, similar to what we explained in the last video, this point here, for example, uh, which was 1, 0, now reflects and it becomes 0, 1. So the x and the y ordinates interchange, basically. Okay, now what we're going on to is looking at the logarithmic form of inverse hyperbolic functions, and then we'll get on to a couple of questions on this. Uh, okay, it says y is equal to the inverse hyperbolic sine. Uh, we want to find the uh, logarithmic form of the inverse. So first of all, you let x equal hyperbolic sine of y. And then write using your basic, basic definition of hyperbolic sine then, that means x is equal to e to the power of y minus e to the minus y over 2. Cross multiply with your 2, you'll get 2x. Is this, we're over to here. 2x is equal to e to the y uh, plus, minus e to the minus y. And then how we got this next line is we multiply through by e to the y. So you get e to the 2y minus 2x e to the y minus 2. And I'm just going to write that line again a wee bit differently. I could have written that as e to the y squared minus 2x times e to the y and then minus 1. So we can then make the subject, uh, we can then uh, try and find this e to the y, solve this. Hey, this is a quadratic now. You've got something squared, uh, minus 2x times that thing, and then minus your numerical value. So it is a quadratic in e to the y, if you can imagine. So here, what we've done, your a is 1, your b is minus 2x, and your c is minus 1. So using your quadratic equation, e to the y then is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. <coughs> and then uh, you can work out then that e to the y is 2x plus or minus, so over here, sorry, 2x plus or minus the square root of 4x squared plus 4 all over 2. And then a wee bit of cancelling down there. That just becomes e to the y is equal to x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. 
but your e to the y is always positive. Either way, the exponential graph is always positive. It's always above the x-axis. So then if you took the negative root, e to the y would be negative. So you can't do that. So that means you have to have this one. Okay, so that tells you then uh, inverse the e. That means you take lin. So you get y is equal to uh, lin of this thing. And then the final result is that your sin hyperbolic, inverse hyperbolic sine of x is equal to lin of brackets x plus the square root of x squared plus one. So work through that in your own time. Make sure you can do that. Um, then the same idea, you can get this and this as well. And these results are given to you in your formula booklet. So there'll be times you'll have to use this. Okay. Uh, right, on to three examples. It asks us to find uh, uh, arc sine, first of all. I'm just gonna write that as uh, inverse hyper, uh, no, you know what, I will write it as arc sine, just uh, arc uh, hyperbolic sine of three over four. So we're just using the result that we had up here. So it's just gonna be lin, and my x value is three over four. Uh, so three over four squared, and then plus one, and the square root of that. And then that worked out for me as lin of three over four plus five over four which is the same as lin of two. The arc hyperbolic cos of three then, again using this top result here on the screen, you can just about see it, lin of x plus the square root of x squared minus one. So that's gonna be lin of three uh, plus, oops, plus, I forgot what it was, uh, 3x, three, 3 squared, which is 9, then minus 1, and a square root. And then if you do that out, you will just get, well, the best you can do really is lin of 3 plus, and that's going to be 2 root 2. Root 8 it would have been, which was part of your calculator, was 2 root 2. And then your last one here, arc of tan, hyperbolic tan of minus 3 over 4, is going to be equal to a half times lin of 1, and then it was plus x, which is just going to, we'll just write it out as plus minus 3 over 4. And over, then 1 uh, minus minus 3 over 4. Let me just check that one. Yes, that's right. And then that is going to be equal to, uh, working across the page, shouldn't be doing this. And then that's going to be a half of a lin of 1 over 7. Uh, and this I just don't like having a fraction in my lin. If I can avoid it, I will. Uh, so I really could write that as 2 times lin of 7. Uh, so sorry, I'll not write that at all. I'll, that's nonsense. Ignore that. Absolute nonsense. Let's take my steps. Try to skip the steps and I'll get what I deserve. Uh, okay, I'm going to write that as lin of uh, 7 to the power of minus 1. And then that's still a half. And then I could write that, then that's going to be the minus can come out the front. So minus a half lin of seven. So I demonstrated beautifully there why we shouldn't st uh, skip steps. You sure are working out uh, your whole thought process. Okay, this last example uh, is a very important one. So here we've just shown how you can, more often than not, you can just use the, uh, uh, use the, uh, the formulas given in your formula book, not always. So you get one, I guess, you, you can't always do it that way. So let's just have a look here at this. So here we've got a hyperbolic uh, equation where you've got hyperbolic uh, sine squared and you've got a hyperbolic cos in it. You need to change that hyperbolic sine squared first of all. So remember we have this formula, hyperbolic cos squared minus hyperbolic sine squared. Remember Osborne's rule. Remember that would have been cos squared x plus sine squared x equals one. But by Osborne's rule, when you convert into hyperbolic, any product of signs or implied product of signs, you must change the positive to the negative or the negative to positive. So that's how we arrive at this thing. So we can then say from that, that means therefore your hyperbolic, hyperbolic sine squared of x could be written as hyperbolic cos squared of x minus one. So we're gonna rewrite our equation. So our equation is gonna be rewritten as brackets hyperbolic cos squared of x minus one plus five is equal to four hyperbolic cos of x. And then that is gonna be hyperbolic cos squared of x minus four hyperbolic cos of x. 
and I've skipped a step here. What's, what are we going to have? Sorry, 5 minus 1, so it's going to be just plus 4, is equal to uh, 0. So this would factorize to be hyperbolic cos, hyperbolic cos of x minus 2, all squared, is equal to 0, which means hyperbolic cos of x is just equal to 2. So once you've got here, uh, you cannot just do this. Uh, you can't just do this thing here. X is equal to hyperbolic cos to the minus 1 of, of 2 and put it in as you'll get one of the answers, which is right, but you're going to miss a root. Now, what I liken this to is a question that says, uh, don't take this down, but if a question says X is equal to root of 2, that's clearly an answer. If X is equal to root of 2, that's fine, that's an answer. But if it said it differently, if it said X squared is equal to 2, then you would have to go then x is equal to the square root of 2, but it's plus or minus the square root of 2. Okay, so uh, you're sort of more in, in this setup. Oops, you're more in uh, that setup there. In these questions, you've got then reverse the process of the hyperbolic cos. Uh, that's really what you want to do. <coughs> so to do that, you've got to use the exponential version of this. So we could just say, therefore, e to the x plus e to the minus x all over 2 is equal to 2. And then we'll just multiply across. That's e to the x plus e to the minus x is equal to 4. Bring everything across to the one side. And then multiply through by e to the x. And then you're going to get e to the 2x minus 4e to the x, and then the plus 1 is equal to 0. So here, you can make e to the x, the subject, you know, by using your quadratic formula, your a is equal to, I'll just write that down, a is equal to 1, your b is equal to minus 4, and your c is equal to uh, 1. So it's going to be minus b, which is going to be 4, plus or minus, the minus b squared, minus 4 times my a times my c, square root of that bit, all divided by uh, 2. And a wee bit of working out, you'll get that your e to the x is equal to 2, plus or minus root 3. And then your x then is equal to lin of 2, plus or minus root 3. So you can see we would have missed roots then. We would have missed the 2 minus, lin of 2 minus root 3, had we done it that way. Okay, so the last few thing there, it says, notice the equation hyperbolic cos of x equals 2 has two roots, but arc cos of 2 would only have, uh, would only have one.